Hello there. Yeah, just quoting Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, no, so um, yeah, so today is the day of King Narmer. So for those for for those who who don't know who King Narmer was, uh, King Narmer was the first king of Egypt that unified Upper and Lower Egypt. So is the considered the first real king of Egypt. And um, he built uh, his tomb in uh, the necropolis of Abydos, in the South Cemetery, Um el Kab. And we are going to go through the tomb of Narmer now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cheers. So here we are, I hope this is working, and uh, yeah, King Narmer. King Narmer was, the tomb of King Narmer was found uh, first by a French uh, guy in the late 1800s, and, uh, and then was uh, explored by Flinders Petrie uh, in the beginning of the 20th century. And a few things belonging to the Abydos Necropolis are in the Petrie Museum in London. So if you find yourself in London, just just go to the Petrie Museum. You'll find lovely, lovely pieces of potteries and stone potteries, really, really with an amazing quality. Uh, unprecedented and uh, really amazing stuff. Uh, the tomb of King Narmer is composed by two uh, let's call them they're not chambers because chambers are you know they have doors so they're not chambers they are two uh, let's say burial places okay and it's, they're called B17 and B18 and so the location of the tomb is right here it's uh, just above the the uh, Hor Aha tomb which is this one big one um, but yeah, so it's this one here. It's covered with sand. Everything is covered with sand in the Abridos necropolis because, uh, well, uh, they wanted to preserve the site. Um, yeah, so is this one? Is this one here? Uh, zooming in a little bit, you can see here. This is one, and then you have a wall, and then you have another here. And we're so. Um, the, the, the funny thing is that the orientation of these tombs and the whole necropolis it seems a bit random um, because th this is north oriented and so this is kind of you know the tombs are a little bit like north west oriented and uh, I don't know why why these tombs are oriented this way um, I don't know, uh, and they, they were not meant to be like super visible and uh, so I don't think any astronomy could really explain this alignment, uh, but they're not consistent, you know, one tomb is facing one orientation, this other is facing another one, this one another one, so yeah, it doesn't seem to be, it doesn't seem to be a site with um, strict regular orientation. Uh, and so this is what it, it, it looked like uh, back in the times of, I think it was Petri. Uh, I, I don't think this is a picture from Petri, I think it was later on. But yeah, so in the earliest 20th century. And you can see here, this uh, B17 and B18. Uh, they're both built uh, with mud brick and there is a wall in between. And uh, there was never found a body uh, of anyone. Uh, of King Narmer here and was never found any sarcophagus or any coffin but was what was but what has been found are like potteries and and uh, and uh, in, you know, things that related to King Narmer so this is why archaeologists tend to believe that this is the King Narmer tomb 
um, what what we can say from from here already is that we have like this bigger room and the smaller one and they're both built in the same material mud brick uh, mud brick you know you take the mud from the from the Nile you put it in a in a shape and uh, you make it you make it dry using the Sun heat and then then you have your your brick and so you stack the brick uh, on top of each other and, and you and you do your amazing uh, low carbon uh, wall um, so this is the plan um, this is how uh, how the plan looks and uh, you, you can see here the two um, you know I represented here two pillars like two columns which are not present here but because uh, there was found um, in, in this tomb, two holes 65 centimeters deep were found uh, in these tombs. And I, I couldn't find the drawing positioning with the position of those pillars, so I just uh, suspected that they would have been in the middle of the rooms. Uh, and why is that? Because the span of the rooms are almost like, this is 3 meters, and this is almost, almost 3 meters, and and so the span uh, would be just enough to to have a pillar and uh, a series of uh, of beams. Um, and so yeah, so so the dimension is quite big. You know, it's three meters by four point one. I don't know any tomb that dates to nowadays that that can you know that is as big as this one. So they were really already with big big uh, ambitions back in the times. Uh, this is dated. Uh, from 3,100, uh, roughly, uh, before Christ, so 5, 000, more than 5,000 years uh, ago, um, and so, so yeah, the whole tomb would be like more than seven meters, and uh, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty big. And I've done here as like a, a diagram on to explain how you would build such a, such a tomb uh, and this diagram will be more or less similar to the next tombs of the Abydos Necropolis um, so yeah I found it I found this interesting because we can from, this is the very basic construction of tombs in ancient Egypt and so we can from this one we can get to more complex stuff in the future uh, but yeah so you will have like the land and then you will excavate uh, and as it, this one you know is sand so you don't excavate straight you excavate with a little slope and um, and then you what would what you will do you will do like a layer of foundation and uh, with a hole preparing the hole for the for the column and then on top of the foundation you will start to build your mud brick walls and you put your timber pillar in the middle and and then you refill the sides uh, with with sand, and and then what you do is you put a layer on top here with the um, like wooden beams, and then on top of the of the wooden beams you will put a mud brick like floor, let's say, which is you know the ceiling actually, but just to just to give him just to give it more uh, rigidity, more you know. More, to be more rigid, and then what you will do, you will cover this in uh, in sand. So what you will see, you, what, what you will see, you will see uh, a little dune of sand uh, containing underneath a tomb. So this is how they would probably have uh, built this tomb. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty simple tomb. So there is, uh, I, I I find this to be like an interesting case study because this is the beginning of the Egyptian the ancient Egyptian architecture so uh, any other tomb that we will study later on we will we will use a similar diagram and there will be some changes but yeah I think this is this gives the picture of how it, how it was built and imagine if we use the same diagrams to explain how the pyramids were built which I really look forward to uh, but we're not going to go into pyramids for the next 
at least five months. So little by little, slowly, we go. We will uncover the construction of ancient Egypt architecture. So yeah, I think this video ends up here. It's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty short. And I hope, uh, I hope you you have a good day. And we see, we see you in the next episode. Will be about the the Horaha, um, Horaha, or Horaha, King Horaha tomb, uh, which is composed by three uh, rooms plus many, many more other tombs um, for the for the for the people that used to work for him. So yeah, things will get more spicy. Um, let's see how, how I can close this now. <laughs>